so glad you chose to celebrate with us today. Today will be a different day. Today will be a unique day of worship. And I'm going to ask you to participate. And I know that's not your favorite thing. Way too many of you grew up in Baptist churches, apparently. You don't want to participate. Uh, I heard a term this weekend called brains on a stick. And, and what they were talking about is that for way too long, the church has considered people brains on a stick. And all we've done is taught you. We haven't given you the opportunity to express and realize that there's more to this Christian life than knowledge. And so today is an opportunity to experience more. As you walked in today, you may not have noticed there was some extra tables with a bunch of rocks on them and some Hershey kisses. If you didn't notice it, you need to pray about your observation. <laughs> because it's a lot of rocks. And on there, the sign said this, these rocks represent our fears and our worries, and we're going to use them today. And if you came into this place today and you just missed it, it's okay. But if you came into this place and you thought, I don't have any worries, I don't have any fears, then I need you to be honest with yourself. The Bible says fear not many times, not to chastise you for being afraid, but because it knows we are people who live in fear. And so, there's rocks to represent our fear, and, our, and there are Hershey Kisses. If you are allergic to milk chocolate, do not get one. But if you're not, I want you to pick one up. This is a request from your pastor. So, I'm going to welcome everybody, and we're going to talk about some announcements. And during this time, we're all going to stand up, and if you need to go back and grab another rock or some a Hershey kiss, don't grab a handful. You just need one, okay? But if you haven't done that today, I don't want you to miss out. So let's just stand up together right now. And everybody just watch me. Don't look at anybody else who may be going back there so we don't judge them, but I'm judging all of them. Thank you. As you're standing this morning, uh, just we, we don't really shake hands, but look around at who's here this morning. Wave to people. Tell them hi. You're glad they're here. Bless them in the name of the Lord. All right? Which is so good. I love that. Thank you, everyone who participated last week in our outdoor service. It was so great to see all of you and to see so many people baptized and to have breakfast burritos and watch you guys show up early and sit for an hour. It was awesome. Thank you for doing that. It's great. Today, today we do something different. Today what we're doing, I just called it praying through the Psalms. It's just an idea that I had. I'm not saying it's a good idea. But it's what we're going to do. And so we're taking Psalm 34 as our guide. And Psalm 34 is a psalm of David. It is the psalm of a survivor. See, what happened in David's life is that he was running away from Saul. King Saul wanted to kill him. And he was running away from Saul. And as he's running away from Saul, he found himself in a Philistine city. And as he's in this Philistine city, which are the enemies, the Philistines, he was recognized by somebody. Now, you may go, so what? Remember that giant that David killed, Goliath? He was a Philistine. And so, when David is recognized in this city, it's not just, hey, you look familiar. It's like, you killed our giant. You beat our team. And so, David is now, it's, it's that old out of the frying pan into the fire. David is in a helpless, hopeless situation. If he leaves the city on his own, Saul's waiting to kill him. If he stays in the city, people have recognized him. And David doesn't know what he's going to do. And so what he does is David pre pretends to be mad. He pretends to have lost his mind in hopes that, that the Philistine king will go, you know what, I don't, I don't need any more crazy people. I'm not going to mess with him. That's David's only hope. It's that in prayer. And so that's what David does. 
This story doesn't mean a ton to us because it was a really long time ago and we know how the story ends. David gets out, right? But when David was in the midst of that moment, he didn't know what was going to happen. And his only hope was, can I survive? I'm just trying to survive. And this morning, if you find yourself going, I'm just trying to survive, then this psalm is for you. Because David took the time to write down something to encourage those who are trying to survive. This morning, I'm going to ask you to do something. I want you to be open to the moving of God's spirit today. I, I told God this morning, I, I, I'm, I know I'm a little too transparent with you, but we're dri- I'm driving. I said, we, he's there with me. Jesus took the wheel. I sat in the passenger seat. It was fantastic. <laughs> driving to church this morning, and I'm talking to God, and I said, God, I'm worried about this morning. I said, God, I'm so afraid that I'm, I'm not going to say the right thing or do the right thing to help our people. God, I'm so afraid that our people are not going to participate, that they're not going to engage in this. I said, God, I am so afraid that you, and I stopped myself because what I was about to say is that you're not going to show up. And God gently reminded me before I got the words out of my mouth that when we gather in his name, he's always here. And so my concern switched and I said, God, I'm so afraid that we'll miss out on your presence today. Let's not do that. He's here. He's with us. Just be obedient to what he calls you to do this morning. David says, I will extol the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. I will glory in the Lord. Let the afflicted hear and rejoice. Glory, glorify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Now, the whole purpose of today is I'll talk more up front, and as we move on, I'll talk less, and you'll talk more to God. But let me just explain this, that word extol. We don't use that. I don't think we use that on a regular basis. And the, the Hebrew word that is translated extol here means to bless or to kneel, and so the question comes to not mind. When was the last time you knelt before the Lord? When was the last time that you acknowledged his kingship in your life? That you acknowledged his worthiness of worship, that that his worthiness of us to go on our knees before him and seek him. And so my hope for you today is that you'll just be open. That if you feel led to find yourself kneeling before the Lord, whether it is physically or mentally or emotionally or spiritually or in your heart, that you'll kneel before him today. That's what that word extol means. I will extol, I will kneel before the Lord at all times. And then it says his praise will always be on my lips. And this morning, you may be one of those people who goes, I I love it when we gather together and sing. And you may be one of those people that goes, ah, it's fine, it's not my thing. That's okay. Today, I'm going to ask you to engage in musical worship. If you don't normally do that, I'm going to ask you to do that. I I want you to engage your heart and your mind and your lips and, and, and sing this morning from your heart. And if you don't know the words, read them and listen to them with all of your heart. And there's a reason behind that because this psalm goes on and says, let the afflicted hear and rejoice. Do you understand That when we worship God, we're putting him on display for those who are here who are hurting. And that our voices in unison will brag about how good God is. So that those who are so brokenhearted that they can't get words out of their mouth would be blessed. And that God would use our voices to minister to their hearts. We're going to praise God together. And by the way, that rock or rocks that you have, the ideas that you have them in your hand right now, don't put them down. Do you get to set your fears in the seat next to you? I guess you could dump them on your spouse. We do that a lot, don't we? I want you to hold on to those rocks until you're told what to do with them, even as we worship, because we worship through our fears. God, you're so good to us today. We gather this morning And with one voice, we worship you. We celebrate you. May your praises ever be on our lips. 
not just this morning, but throughout the day and the week and through our lives. May we be people who praise you, people who praise you, God, people who praise you. And as we move forward, stand, sit, whatever you need to do. Man, our fears, like these rocks, weigh us down. They make life so complicated sometimes, don't they? I was standing over here and I was like, I needed to open my Bible and I've got to hold it in one hand and i got a rock in the other and it just, it just complicates things. Sometimes it is our fears that keep us from even opening this wonderful book because our fears have overcome us way too many times. I have a fear. One of my fears is that people will know just how infallible I am, what a bad speller I am, how bad my grammar is. At the end of the day, that they'll know I'm a dummy. This next point says, delivery me from my fears. I don't know why I have that fear. Just scratch out that why. Deliver me from my fears. That's our hope. Our hope would be that God will do that miraculously today or that today will be the beginning of him delivering you from fears. David says, I sought the Lord and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. Those who look at him are radiant. Their faces are never covered with shame. This poor man called and the Lord heard him. He saved him out of all of his troubles. And the angel of the Lord encamped around those who fear him and he delivers them. That word fear, it it appears four times in this translation. It appears four times in this Psalm. And I want you to understand that word. That Hebrew word that is used there, I, I think it's, it's better translated revere, to revere the Lord. That is to have a deep respect and awe of God's power and his authority and his majesty and to respond to God accordingly. This morning I've chosen that rocks would represent our fears. David tells us that God delivers me from all my fears. The fear that weights us down, it occupies our thoughts, it can paralyze us. And I'm gonna give you something physical to do with your fears today. In a moment, I'm going to just say an open-ended prayer. I'm gonna get you started and then on your own, I want you to talk to God about your fears. Just be cautioned. I did this last night and I did not enjoy it. Because I like to think I don't have a lot of fears and worries, but you start talking about them to God and all of a sudden they just bubble up. So I have a rock today. Because as your pastor, I have my own fears. But we're gonna have some time where just there's a little music in the background. And as you talk to God about your fears, if you'd like to let go of those fears, then I want you to come forward and just drop them in the baptistry. Just take those fears and symbolically go, God, I'm done with it. And we're gonna ask that God, just as he washes away our sins, that he'd wash away our fears this morning, whatever they may be. You have the freedom throughout the rest of this day to drop that rock in that baptistry. I hope you'll do it as soon as you feel capable. But as we go through the rest of the morning, you can bring it up at any time. Or you can take your fears home with you. But I hope you won't. Father God, this is your time. This is your place. What we hold in our hand is merely a rock. But I pray that you will Help us feel the weight of it and remind us of the weight of our fears. Father, listen to the hearts of each person here this morning as we talk to you about our fears and pray you would help us find deliverance from them. Now you talk to God.
of the morning you just if you get the freedom to bring that fear up and drop it off you bring it and drop it off at some point as my head was bowed and I was praying just all of that sound it just sounded like garbage being dumped like when the trash truck comes and it just dumps all the garbage and it's our fears are just garbage they just they make our life smell they weigh us down, they're useless. So I pray as you go through your day and your week, just keep giving those fears over to God. It's kisses time. Guys, I'm talking about the chocolate. Go ahead if you're not, don't have an allergy to chocolates, just take, open up that little guy and just, just eat, eat that little piece of chocolate right now as I read this next portion of scripture taste and see that the Lord is good blessed are those who take refuge in him revere the Lord you his holy people for those who revere him lack nothing the lions may grow weak and hungry but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing to taste something, you have to, you have to make a choice, right? To open your mouth, to take a bite, that's how you taste it. And when we taste something good and we're with someone, what do we do? 
we say, oh, this is good. You got to try this. Sometimes ad nauseum, right? No, no, just take a bite. I don't want it. Just take a bite. Just, you got to try it, right? And I think what David is bringing to mind is that sensation that we have when we taste something that's so good. And we look at that person with us and go, oh, you got to try him. God is so good. Just taste him. So this morning, what I want you to do is to take a few minutes and tell somebody around you about how good God is to you or a time that you've seen him be good. Just, that's it. That's your prayer. Your prayer is not eyes closed and head bowed but your prayer during this time are the words that you say to those people around you and expressing how good God is do that right now God is so good and we could stop now and call it a day, but there's something much deeper for the children of God. But to go deeper with God requires us to be more open and more vulnerable to Him. And the next few things we do, I'm calling you to a place of vulnerability, openness. Silence my tongue as I seek peace. Come, my children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear or the reverence of the Lord. Who, whoever of you loves life and desires to see more good days, that's me, keep your tongue from evil and your lips from telling lies. Turn from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. We take this word evil and we think it has to be really, really bad to be evil. But the truth of the matter is when we talk about keeping our tongue from evil, what that really means is to exercise control over your speech. That's different, isn't it? to exercise control over your speech, to do everything you can to avoid deceit, which means to fact check what you share. And just because it supports your belief doesn't make it true. And therefore, when I share it without fact checking it, I'm not doing everything I can to avoid deceit. What I may be doing is promoting deceit, which means I'm lying. Refrain from harmful speech, gossip, slander. Slander, speaking ill of someone, saying mean things about them. And in our world today, Our speech comes in different forms. It comes in the words out of our mouths, the things that we write, text, type, post, repost, tweet, retweet. Friends, we're God's people. We're held to a higher standard. We are not given the freedom. Hear me, you and I are not given the freedom to promote slander. And so today, right after we've just been moved by the goodness of God, it's time to move to a place of humility. And so what I want you to do, and again, you be as vulnerable as you want to, as you're willing to be. I want you to take some time to ask God to forgive you for specific things 
you've said to someone or about someone, someone you may not even know, but you've said slanderous things about them. And if this morning you find yourself going, I don't, I don't know any Tommy, then I dare you to ask God to point some out to you because we all have. And so in this time, silently, I'm asking that you just take a few moments and if you have said something about them or to them, I want you to ask God to bless them by name. Whomever they are, your enemy, your family member, a friend, a stranger, a politician, we are God's people called to a higher standard. We're the ones who are called to bless those who curse us. God, this is difficult. I can come up with a hundred reasons why someone deserves me saying something about them. But this is not about who deserves what. This is about being your child. So Father, hear each one of our hearts as we come to you now and ask for your forgiveness for specific things we have said, texted, tweeted, forwarded about others. And then give us the boldness to trust your word enough to seek your blessing for them, God. who you are to share with others your goodness I know way too many times we abuse we abuse them and use them to curse others how Lord we can expect your blessing when we are cursing others so thank you for your forgiveness Please continue to draw to, my, draw to our minds whomever it is we have spoken ill of and give us the boldness to pray your blessings on them. Amen. David goes on and says, the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are attentive to their cry. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil to blot out their name from the earth and the righteous cry out and the Lord hears them. He delivers them from all their troubles. And hear these words this morning, the Lord is close to the brokenhearted and he saves those who are crushed in spirit. A broken heart a crushed spirit, can you relate? Again, I'm going to ask you to be vulnerable. If there's been a time before that, that just God brings to mind, if there's been a time before when you had a broken heart or a crushed spirit and you just didn't think you were going to make it, but God saw you through it, would you just stand where you are so that we can worship him and thank him for that? Yeah. Look around. He's near the brokenhearted. He sees you through it. You just keep putting one foot in front of the other and keep going. God, thank you for these testimonies. I 
have a seat. And now an even more vulnerable thing I'm going to ask you to do this morning. We so want everyone to think that everything's okay and we're doing well. But if you are experiencing a time right now where your heart is broken, where your spirit is crushed, then I'm going to ask you to just stand where you are. If right now you're in a season of life, a period of time where your heart is broken, your spirit feels crushed, would you be vulnerable enough to stand right now wherever you are so that we can pray for you? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, church. It's time to be the church. For we're called to bear one another's burdens. And so in this moment, as we sing this song, if someone is standing, you go to them. Put a hand on them and pray for them. You don't have to pray through the whole song, but just go to them and pray for them. Move now. Let no one stand alone or bear burdens alone. Let's start praying for each other, church. God doesn't waste the hurt. He's making new wine, even in the midst of the crushing. Thank you, church, for being the church. The righteous may have many troubles, but the Lord delivers them from them all. He protects all their bones. Not one of them will be broken. Evil will slay the wicked. The foes of the righteous will be condemned. The Lord redeems his servants. No one who take refuge in him will be condemned. Have you taken refuge in God by receiving Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior? If you have, then the Bible explains that God has eternal life waiting for you and abundant life here and now. And this morning, if you've never said yes to God and received Jesus Christ to be the King of your life, and the Lord of your life, today's the day to do it. And in just a moment, when we finish this last song, there's going to be some folks right over here by this door, and they'd love to talk to you about that and to pray with you. But we finish this morning by celebrating the fact that our God has us. Abundant life here, eternal life there. And we hold on to him. So church, let's stand together and celebrate our King. Father God, you are so good to us. We praise you. We thank you for this time, this morning. Thank you for allowing us to experience your presence. Thank you for hearing our cries, taking our fears. Thank you for reminding us of your goodness, forgiving us of our failures. Thank you for the testimony of the hearts and spirits that were healed and for starting the process of bringing healing to those hearts and spirits that are broken this morning. And now, Father, we say thank you for Jesus and for being such a good, good God. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.